fuck, I don't get how to do this. Yes? Yo, wait, can you explain this to me? I don't get it. Did you just say you don't get it? Yo, everyone, Jace Bug's stupid as fuck. Is he even Asian anymore? Whenever we do math at our school, it's like a war. You'll probably relate. It's the most common metric to measure your intelligence. Hey, what'd you get in the maths test? You only got a 60? Bro, you're dumb as fuck. Maths, the language that everybody understands. There's only one answer, and if you venture through the obstacles a problem throws at you, you'll end up at the right place, and you get the correct answer. You made it. But this seemingly easy subject, with only one correct answer, is the bane for many students. For some, it is like their second language, and it's so easy for them. Whereas for some, it's so alien to them, and it's just a jumble of letters, symbols, and numbers on your page. And here's the secret of being good at math so that you don't have to be that guy in the classroom who doesn't understand the concept. And no, it's not an ancestral thing that's passed down from Asian to Asian. You can learn it too. Warning, you have a 100% chance of liking maths more after this video. But first, let me show you the simplistic complexity of maths. This problem right here at first glance looks crazily difficult. How can we possibly find the areas of these triangles with none of the lengths given and find the red shaded area? But what if I told you by simply knowing the formula for an area of a triangle and the area of a parallelogram you could solve this? Hence this problem was designed for elementary learners. And at first glance it seems impossible to do with just that information right? But the key is finding sets of triangles whose area equals half the area of the parallelogram. So we know that the area of a triangle is half base times height and we also know that the area of a parallelogram is base times height so by knowing that these triangles equal half the area of the parallelogram and it's even the case for multiple triangles as they use the whole base we'll be able to find a simultaneous equation therefore if we letter the remaining boxes we know that this triangle is half the area and these two triangles are also half the area so we put them equal to each other and we get x equals 9 and maths is like this a lot of the time. Easy concepts you learn are tested in harder questions with additional steps. And so it makes it so that the foundation, the easy things you overlook, such as the area of a triangle and the area of a parallelogram, if you don't have a solid foundation, you won't get far in maths. And so this is why you struggle at maths. The reason that I showed you this problem is that a lot of the time, people think you need to know more formulas and memorize them. But sometimes it's the basics that aren't there. These are simple concepts, an area of a triangle and an area of a parallelogram. Most of you probably learned this when you were seven, eight. But most of you wouldn't have been able to solve this problem, simply because you didn't know this in depth enough, that an area of this triangle, as long as the base is the same as the base of the parallelogram, will always have an area half of the parallelogram. Think about a house. If the foundation and base is not built firmly, the more stuff you try to pile on top of it and add things to it, it will eventually collapse, right? So you need to stop thinking about math as something that, oh, I need to learn more formulas. I need to learn how this works. I need to learn new concepts. Whereas a lot of the time, you're just lacking the foundations. Math is one of the few subjects where you really need to understand it and you'll agree in biology you could have no idea what a mitochondria is but if you simply remember the definition the powerhouse of the cell you'll get the marks but for math imagine that for square roots instead of understanding how they work you just learn them so instead of knowing that they're the opposite of squaring you could have just memorized the square root of 25 as 5 as a fact but when you had to face the square root of 36 or the square root of 100 you wouldn't know how to do them because you hadn't memorized them instead if you had just simply learned the fact that square roots are the opposite of squaring you have been able to do this easily so imagine the next math test all the answers just magically come to you here's what you have to do number one know what the question is asking math questions normally want to test something specific rarely are questions there just for the sake of them whether it's solving quadratics completing the square difference of two squares knowing how to break down a problem and understand what it's trying to test is imperative because a lot of the time math problems especially big ones as you'll know it's just a series of simple operations that are multi-step so by understanding and really getting used to how math problems are constructed you'll be able to see and get used to different steps that will be needed for example if you do enough of graph gradient and intersection questions you start to memorize that they have a series of steps you follow for each question. One, you rearrange to get y equals mx plus c, then you differentiate, then you sub in values, and then you find the new gradient, etc, etc. If you don't feel confident in the little things, the bigger and more complicated the problems get, you won't understand them. Two, and so whilst doing problems you don't understand, don't look at the answers. You should always try to get as far as you can, especially when revising by yourself. It's all too easy to just give up on a maths question and look at the answers. But that's a prime example of memorizing and not understanding. So get to where you can, because math questions 
don't give you all the marks for answers because a lot of the time you get marks for your workings and working points. So say that you didn't know how to factorize the quadratic, but you still could have gotten to the point where you get the quadratic. And if you had just done that, you would have got five out of the six marks and just not got the answer mark. And so by making it a habit of you looking at the answers without understanding it is detrimental because you're throwing away free marks. So whenever you do a question you don't understand or you're not familiar with, write down everything you know that could be relevant and try and draw connections of what you're doing. Especially when you're doing circle theorems and geometry, this becomes prevalent. When you start labeling angles that you could know, the picture starts becoming more and more clear and you get the message. Sometimes when the teacher gives you a clue by saying, what do all even numbers have in common? They're divisible by two. Just by thinking about the facts you already know and trying to implement them into the question will make it so that you know what to do. And once you do look at the answer at the end to see if you got the question right, always do another question. People say that, oh, so I've done one question and I look at the answer and I know what the answer is and they stop there. But you have to do another question of the same topic to see if you can do it. Because if you truly understood, you'd have no problem of doing the same topic question again, just with different numbers. If you can, you understood it. But if you can't, go back and see where your knowledge have gaps. And the third thing is practice. The only way to get good at math is to practice. And I know at the start it will be a hard switch to flip. You dislike maths and you don't see the point of trying to get as far as you can when you just can't seem to do it. But I like to think of it as this. As you start writing down things you don't know and you start understanding it bit by bit, more and more of the problem becomes clearer. It's like in a video game where you discover more and more and you get more and more used to it. More of the map becomes accessible to you and you've discovered it already and it becomes easier and easier. So I promise you that if you just go out with the mindset of wanting to expand your math skills and understanding rather than just brute force learning formulas, you can level up your problem solving ability and you'll find it more interesting. Just think back to the satisfaction you feel when it just makes sense and you get it. Go in small steps and I recommend watching walkthrough videos on math problems you don't understand because simply just looking at the answer and having no idea how to get there is a bad way to learn. They break it up for you and you can see how you have to break up your problems effectively to get from point A to point B. And if you don't know a certain bit they're talking about, go and revise that bit. I'm really excited to see your progress after watching this video and no longer will math be the thing that you dislike. Let me know how these tips worked and I promise you that you'll enjoy math more and get the results you wanted. Yeah.